All right, guys, it's Rogway here, and we're doing another Photoshop tutorial. Um, and we've got today we're looking at a technique called selective color. And selective color is a nice way to draw attention to parts of your photograph that otherwise might get missed, or if you got a busy background or lots of color in there, and you want something to just stand out to, uh, you know, show that it's more important, this is a good technique to do that. So, uh, if you open up your Wednesday tutorial, you'll see that there's three files in there. i.jpg, girl with umbrella, and mud puddle. And we're gonna start with the i.jpg, and let's open that with Photoshop. Here we go. All right. Wait for that to load. And you're going to see that when this loads up, we got a picture of a person's eyeball. There it is. And um, this is a perfect candidate for selective color just because of the fact that, you know, you got something that's so bright and vibrant and it's surrounded by kind of just this bland, nothing color of the skin or the red in the eye. And so we'd like that to stand out, to draw attention to the colors in the eye. So we're going to look at a few different ways to do this. We're going to look at three different techniques on how to create this effect. So let's get started. Uh, first thing first, we're going to go to the, I like to switch to the move tool just so I got control over my image here. And we're going to go to the layers palette on the right hand side. I'm going to just close the history and actions window. We don't need that. Press command zero. Have your image fill the whole screen like that. Hold control and click the background layer and let's go with duplicate layer. And it's going to ask you what kind of name do you want to give it? We're just going to leave it as background copy. Say OK. And now we have a duplicate of this picture on two separate layers. I just want to mention before we even get started here that I take no um, response, not responsibility, I take no credit for the photos that are used in this. It's simply for educational purposes and uh, that's it. All right, so let's take a look. We got a background copy layer and we got a background layer. We're going to turn off the top layer the way we do that is by turning off the eyeball, not the eyeball in here, but the eyeball here. Click that, it turns off. You don't see anything change because we just have the exact copy. Then select background layer like that. Make sure it's highlighted with blue. Go to image adjustments, black and white. And this little window that pops up is, is very useful. We can slide the colors around, the reds and the yellows. And we can really change how this photo is going to go to black and white. And we're not too concerned with the eye itself because we're leaving that in color, but we're looking at the skin around it. So that would affect, mainly be affected by the reds and the yellows in this case. So we're just going to tweak that just like that and hit OK. So now we have a black and white version of our file. And on top of it, we've got the color version. Simple enough. So now highlight the background copy layer. Make sure the eye is now on. And you should be looking at a color version of your image, exactly like the original. If we just turn this eye off, we can see that the background, uh, sorry, the background layer is black and white, and it's sitting below the color version. What we're going to do now is we're going to just hit the eraser key, or the eraser uh, tool here, about halfway down in your tool list. And we're going to change the, the hardness of our brush to about, well, let's try 60% to start. And we're going to use the brackets on the keyboard uh, to the right of the P key to change the size of our brush. And what I like to do is I like to start really big and bring my brush size down in size as I get closer to the part that I want to keep in color or whatever detail I'm trying to outline. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start clicking and you'll notice that when you erase, what happens? Well, the eraser is erasing the color part on the layer above, and it's showing us the black and white part that's on the layer below. 
All right, so I'm just gonna very quickly go around this as carefully as I can. You'll notice I'm not changing my brush size just because I'm being somewhat careful. All right, and you'll notice there's a little bit of skin color on the edge. We'll just get rid of that. Oops, screwed up here. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Erase all that, just like that. Beautiful. And there we go. All right, so there's that first effect. That's what we want. That's the selective color look, where we've left the eyeball in color and the rest in black and white. We can turn off the lower layer just to see how good of a job we did, and that looks pretty decent. All right, so we're gonna save that file. Save as to your desktop, call it i.psd. If you got a weekly folder, save it into there, but uh, i.psd, save it. That's good, hit okay. That is the easiest way. That is the first way we're gonna look at here, and that's the easiest way. There are a couple problems with that way. However, as you can tell, very easy, very quick, and we can get that effect pretty simple. Next, we're going to close this off, and we are going to go to Girl with Umbrella. And we're going to open that with Photoshop. Here we go. And there's our picture, Command-0. And let's fill that to fit the whole screen. Same deal here. Right-click, duplicate the layer, hit OK. Turn off the eye on the top layer. Go to the background layer. And let's go image adjustments, black and white. Let's take that color out. You'll notice in this photo, it's excellent candidate for all the colors. The red will affect her dress. The yellow really, really brings out or, you know, makes the grass darker. I like to go really bright and kind of dreamy sort of effect. The green, same deal there. Can really make that grass kind of pop out, sort of like an infrared effect. And all of these are going to affect a different part of the photo just because there's a lot of color in this photograph. All right, so something like that. I'm not very picky. Whatever you think looks good and hit OK. Turn on the top layer, the background copy layer. Hit the little eye here so we can see the color. This one we're going to do a little differently. We're going to use a layer mask to hide the parts that we don't want to see. So down at the bottom of the layers palette, you're going to see this rectangular donut shape and click that. It's the add layer mask button. All right, and now using the paintbrush with black as our color, we're going to just shrink that brush down and we're going to adjust the hardness of our brush to about, uh, let's go about 60% again. Now it's really important that the foreground color of the brush is in black. Remember from previous tutorials that black is going to hide what's on the layer. It's going to mask that area. If we want to bring it back, if we screw up, we can always use white to bring it back. So let's look at how that works. Painting very nicely, and you can see that the color comes out right away because it's masking it out. All right, and we're going to just carefully go around like so. And I'm not getting too close to the umbrella just yet because uh, I just want to get most of the color around it out first and then I'll get I'll move in closer after so there we go we're getting it nice all right something like that now I'm gonna bring my brush size down as you can tell I'm gonna hide the lower layer like that and you can see all the parts that I missed whoa that went right into the umbrella and we're just gonna carefully go around this as well now don't worry if it's not perfect because most of this is going to be hidden anyways you'll see what i mean in a sec all right i'm just going around it's okay if you have a little bit of a shadow left all right if i was doing this perfectly like if i wanted it to be perfect then i would go zoom right in and get it exact but for the sake of the tutorial and the sake of time here we're just going to go around it pretty quickly Get rid of all those, you know, soft edges, just like that. All right, don't worry about the little bit of black that's left. Turn on your lower layer once again. So there she is, the little girl with the umbrella, and the umbrella's in color, and she is black and white. Now we're going to add another effect to this image. 
So we're going to highlight the background layer, just click that background layer. And we're going to add a duotone effect, meaning that the color in the background uh, image is not going to just be black and white. It's going to have a second color in there or a hue adjustment so that the um, photo looks a little more classy. Show you what I mean. Go to the background layer, go to image adjustments, hue and saturation. This is going to pop up. Let's just move it over a little bit. Make sure the background layer is selected. I forgot to mention that, or maybe I did, but uh, that's really important. Turn on the colorize option. You see that right there in the bottom right? Turn that on. And now when you move your hue slider, you can change the hue of that background to whatever you want. All right, you can add a really nice duotone effect. I like the sepia look. It's traditional and it looks nice. So hit OK. You can also change the saturation. You can make it more vibrant or less vibrant. So there's just a touch of color in there. That's cool. Hit OK. Now, one thing that I don't like about the, the photo when you do that is now this really looks fake. It's popping out and it's just looking really like it doesn't belong. So you go back to your background copy layer above and you're gonna pull down the opacity slider right here that's in layers, just like this. Pull it back a bit so those colors aren't so vibrant. And now you're gonna end up with this nice effect where you've still got something in color and the rest in black, well, not black and white, but sepia toned or duotoned. And you have a very nice classy, in my opinion, classy looking image. Here's a picture that now has a lot more interest. Not to say, if I go back to my history, I'm not saying that the original wasn't good. It's a great photo. But in my opinion, now it's got kind of a classy look to it. It looks nice. Save that. File save as or save desktop girl with umbrella. Save it. Hit OK. Let's look at one last way to do this. Close this off and let's go to Mud Puddle. We're going to add kind of a neat effect to this one. So open up the Mud Puddle in Photoshop. All right, and there it is. Not a very attractive image. We've got a puddle of mud. And uh, yeah, not very attractive. For this one, same deal. Actually really repetitive here. We're going to uh, control click that background layer. We're going to say duplicate the layer. We're going to say OK. We're going to turn off the eye, we're going to highlight the lower layer, and we're going to go image adjustments, black and white. This is all the same steps that we've done previously. Adjust this a little bit. What I like to do for this particular image, or images like this, is to make the surrounding area around the puddle as dark as possible, and the puddle itself pretty light, something like that. Now here's a different way of doing it. We're going to turn that eye back on and we're going to highlight the top layer so that becomes active. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to use the quick mask button, which is at the bottom of the tools right here. We're going to click that. We're going to use our paintbrush. We're going to make sure our hardness is about 60. That's good. We'll just leave it at that. And make sure your foreground color is black. It should still be set from before. And we're going to paint over the puddle. Now when you paint, it should go red. Sometimes people set it to custom colors, but usually it's set to red, and that means you're doing it right. All right, we're creating a quick mask, just like that. I'm even going to go a little softer. I'm going to bring it down to about 35, just to get a little bit of the soft edge, just like that. And that's looking really good. And don't forget to paint the inside part of the puddle as well. I'm going to go to a bigger brush so this goes much faster. Like that. There we go. And we got the puddle selected nicely. And like I said, I'm just going along the edge just to add a little bit of a soft edge and make it look more realistic at the end. And now what we can do in this case when we've done a quick mask, and this is just different ways, whatever you think is easier for you, we're going to click the quick mask button once again. And what happens is, and I don't know why Photoshop does this, but everything else besides the puddle is selected. So we're going to go select, inverse, and we want to have the puddle selected, nothing else. And now we can click the layer mask button once again, and watch what happens. Photoshop automatically adds a layer mask based on the selection that we created. 
This makes life much easier than you know, trying to create a layer mask sometimes. All right, so I like that. We're gonna add a quick effect to this just to kind of finish up. Something to kind of make this puddle more interesting. We're gonna go down to the bottom of the layers palette and we're gonna click FX. And we're gonna to go to gradient overlay. Now you're probably wondering, what the heck am I doing? What, I'm ruining it. What this does is it overlays a gradient over top of whatever you have on that layer. So you look at this and you might be like, what the heck? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to gradient. I'm gonna change this to a rainbow gradient. We can go to any gradient, we can make our own even. We're gonna to go to the rainbow one. And so it fills with a rainbow gradient. Still looks weird. The style is linear, that's good. We can change the angle of our gradient. We can make it going any direction we want. It doesn't have to be straight up and down. Personally, I think it shouldn't be. And then we can change the scale of that gradient as well. We can make it bigger or smaller just by using the scale. Now you might ask, what am I doing? Why, it looks stupid. The last step here is to change your blending mode and to set it to soft light or overlay or whatever you think looks good. But I think soft light looks cool and we can pull our opacity down a bit so it's not so intense. And you end up with this kind of oil slick looking puddle which has a rainbow color built into it. I think that looks really neat. It looks much cooler than just a simple one color boring brown mud puddle. All right, now if we had done this with the eye at the beginning, you know, we could have the eye in a, in a rainbow sort of color. We can pull the opacity down so we can still get a lot of the original color showing through. This just adds a nice little touch to this uh, particular image, I think anyways. So uh, now make sure you save your work, we're done with it. In this tutorial we looked at uh, three different ways to make selective color images. We looked at the eraser tool, we looked at adding layer masks, we looked at quick mask, we looked at a gradient overlay effect. All right, we're working with multiple layers which is good uh, for you to learn in Photoshop. So hopefully you got through that, make sure you save it, call it mud puddle, sure, save it, and hand it in when you get a chance.